and today we're going to be talking about the Power Director app, the new UI user interface, April 2020, and this is number 65 in the series. There will be about six main things in this video, and then just a tour as well. So the main thing is what you can see on screen, and I am recording this on my Moto G4 5.5 inch screen on Android 7. Um, and this is the new UI. So what we're getting at here, let me just bring this down a little bit because I want to be thorough. I'm making this video to be thorough. Quite honestly, not to be that entertaining at all for those people who want to learn this thing. So new version 6.7 is looking a little like this. Updated user interface, continually review and update the app to make the changes. Now I've been going, as people know, for three years on this thing. So I want to look at the differences. The big deal, of course, is that if you are brand new to the PowerDirector app, then you can find this on Android and iOS. And my guess, without you know getting hold of the Cyberlink team, is if they build the app once, it is possible maybe to ship it to Android and iOS at the same time. So therefore, you might get something very, very kind of like identical. So if you're a coder, you don't have to code it once for Android, once for iOS. But the point is this. So let's have a look at the look and the feel of it. The first thing I'm going to cover is this timeline thing. So you can see that looking down, and I'm just going to use a sample video here, which I'm just going to play a, you know, a couple of seconds. That running water, by the way, is coming out of my mobile phone speaker and into the Zoom H2N that I'm recording my voice with. The point of it is, is you've got layers. So if you go back to the beginning, you've got a main video layer where you can probably see on my my tap here, then you've got a layer one, a layer two, and then on this UI, of course, if you drop it down and you get the big um, video preview, you're not going to see any layers, obviously. But if you come back, look, when you go and go up, I've added a voice layer, you know, just as a demo for me, and this background um, nature water stream thing. So what I'm trying to get to is there is no way I've got to drop down for the developers and a drop up, but I can't go up again and make the live video preview really small so I can actually see all the layers all the time. So in other words, let's um, just show you what I mean. See that there's there's my top layer, there's my, my first layer which says Power Director, then I've got an arrow look on the next one, but I can't see any audio, so I don't know what's going on. So if I go and say wish to, and I'll just play this a tiny bit. My little voice over there, the moment I tap it, I get this big rectangle in grey at the bottom with split volume and duplicate on. But you'll notice that I've lost my other audio unless I can dial them in like this. So if you're trying to sync up audio, this could be a little bit difficult. So look, I've covered the timeline thing. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it is not. So if I come along and say so want to edit that arrow, you can clearly see that I've got lots of um, edit options like filter adjustment, you know, tons of them for that edit arrow. But what I can't do is line it up with audio unless I hold and then move it kind of like up. So if I was trying to link the arrow directly to the end of that voice clip, can you see a little bit small here? It doesn't matter whether we're on a phone or a tablet, it's still hidden like that. Right. That's that bit done. Next one I'm going to talk about is the effects settings. Now there is a hidden button here on the left which is the apply to all. So at the moment if I click our main, all I've got here is a, a video here of um, like a time lapse morning, you know, sunrise, you know, with a tree and stuff like that. The point of it is that if I tap it once to edit, there we go. You can see that once again it's decided to sort of move up a bit. No, 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 that is it. And then I've got split volume filter. Now notice the ones with the little white dot at the bottom, which of course is sort of here. Oh, you get the idea. Speed and pan and zoom. Those are things that I've done already. So when it says filter, I've already added a modern filter. So if I go and take that filter off to go to original, then I go back, bottom left, you can see that there is no filter white dot, which means I've not had the effect applied. Now watch this very carefully, because this is one of the reasons why, I'm going to come back, why I've added a 
yellow and a white slide, which is this is just a practice video for me, you'll notice that there is still a video effect in there. In other words, if I hit this, it says effects. If I click it, those are slightly different. I'm talking about the color effects, which I can't change. Now look, see that vignette? If I go back and I say filter original, notice third button on top left, there is a duplicate tick, which means apply to all. Now I've clicked it, nothing has actually happened on screen apart from the apply to all button has like briefly went blue. If I did it again, look, see it's just gone blue. What happens on the right? Yeah, you see the, now when we go back, if we play it, there is no effect on that video clip. But if I go back, we're back to a native clean and crisp yellow and a clean and crisp white. So this is one of the reasons I'm doing this is actually to teach myself as well. So if I go on to this clip again, let's just play this a minute. Stop. Now if I want to add that filter again, this time I can go in and say I want an artistic filter of say coffee. Wait for a moment and it goes to a coffee color. At that precise moment that is not copied over to anywhere else on the timeline unless I hit the apply to all button which is top left third one down looks like two little squares with a white tick in it right I've covered that bit <gasps> apply to all right um, effects is next so now I'm going to go back now there are two ways to go back top left I can go back and bottom uh, is also a back button. Now this time I want to hit an effect. Right, so where are the effects? Here we go, just next to speed. Effects. Now this time I'm going to go into a TV wall thing. I'm going to go all the way along. So at the moment there's no effects on the track. I'm going to hit TV wall. The moment I hit TV wall, I just wait a second just for the uh, business to happen and it does and now I've got this you know effect which is what one two three four uh, one two three four four by four more or less now on some screens you might miss this but on TV wall you've got three buttons which you tap that brings up another sub menu which is horizontal and vertical so if we tap say 40 vertical and move it up to the maximum of 200 that's how you change every single effect. Now I've got this TV wall of like literally 200 little screens. Or I can dial it down. It always opens up in my estimation at about 40. And of course you can unlink those two, go over to another different number to get different kind of like squashed up effects and things like that. So that's how you can do this for if I wanted to go to say on a Let's have a look at one, say a kaleidoscope. Wait, there's my kaleidoscope. Hit the buttons and I've got a segment X and Y offsets that I can just dial in as I wish to. But what you'll find here is, just go back one, is the three button is the sub menu. Right, I've covered that one. So every effect has to be applied to every single piece on the timeline. So if this was, so I've got 10 video clips and I all wanted to be kaleidoscope, I'd have to apply them, I believe, one at a time. There is no on the left apply to all. Right, let's go back to the home button again. And this time I've got to, yeah, okay. So if I was going to, oh, so what have I just done there? Go back in again. And I'm going to just look at one observation, and these are only observations, that if I wanted to add, say, a clip, and let's just say a video clip or a, an image, the first thing is I use a lot of colour slides. Now, what I usually do on old school way is just click there, and my, see where it says stock video, video capture, and Google Drive, that used to have the colour board. Now the colour board is just found, I believe, in the image only. So if I hit colour board, then it will come up like that. And then, I, of course, if I wanted a red, I would, I would do that in the normal way. My point here is if I take a picture, so let's take a picture. Now, 
these are still images and what we've got here which I believe I thought this meant to be video clip but actually it's meant to be I believe so this top left one is a landscape photo that you can tell because of the little film thing this one is actually a portrait picture get the idea portrait this one is a landscape so that's quite nice to know if you've got video clips or pictures before you edit them in because of course if you're doing a 16 by 9 landscape to know that you're going to add in say landscape pictures immediately then that would be quite useful okay then so we've we've covered everything apart from the look and feel of it so in other words if I went back and I looked at adding if you're brand new to this we can add video clips pictures and audio now the thing that they are saying in this update as well which is like you know oh wow it's royalty free clips and excuse my voice there but the point of it is is you're already paying money for the app and to get these clips which is what three six nine and twelve fifteen sixteen you know there's some clips here that are coming in you have to say if i wanted this one here if I wanted to, to play this or download it, I'd have to pay extra money for it. I would argue, I'm afraid, Cyberlink, that I could go straight back to, say, Creative Commons at, say, YouTube and get a lot of thousands and thousands of royalty-free clips there that other users have made available. But, hey, it's a step, isn't it? And I fully appreciate that sometimes the developers on these mobile apps don't make as much money as they do on the desktop applications, which will be hundreds of pounds, where this thing um, is actually a lot, lot cheaper even if you did like the, the annual thing. As I said, I've said in previous videos, I was very lucky, and I got this for five UK pounds about three or four years ago. And, you know, super happy. Look at that, that's quite nice, isn't it? There's a bit of kaleidoscope with a bit of running water. So then we go back to home again, straight to home, and just bring that up. Continuing with the UI, we've got add clips, we've got add layers, same thing text is now on a layer uh, sort of sub menu top menu of one then you've got video layers image layers and sticker layers i've had a question in the past where people say all oh, my stickers have disappeared what happens is that you can get them by going back into the get more and then you go to or for me i go to free and then i re-download some which I like. So in theory, I, I did this the other day, I was just browsing on this, and I went through a lot of them, and then I came back to download them to my device, and in theory, where you can see all those grey rectangles, quite honestly, they actually should be the ones that um, I've already downloaded, but I'm not going to spend time on stickers. What I am going to spend a tiny bit of time is things with transitions, they are very, very much the same, and we can add a timer with them, and then the last thing I'm going to say about all of this is the home button, which I think is new, isn't it? I think there is no save button on the settings. We've got top right audio mixing, new rectangle and layout like on screen. I'm talking about the design of it, but pretty much the same. We've got settings, which again, I would argue they are pretty much the same. The top right button you used to have a save and a render. Now clicking that once, we've got a one button, which I presume saves all the time. And then we've got save to gallery in the you know the normal way. Biggest deal I think, as many people have said, is that when you open up an edit, we've now got split volume, filter, and all these things are on the horizontal, where they used to be up here on the uh, top left. Again, an argument I hope that I can push as feedback to Cyberlink is to say, if enough people say it, I hope, that to bring another up arrow here to shrink that preview down. So when you hit edit, you can have all of your split and volume and skins and crops and all those lovely things, stabilizers. But somewhere, if they are going to stay at the bottom, I would say it's screaming urgent to actually get more layers visible in the timeline desktop editing you've got all of these all on screen and you can move things around hey this is a brilliant brilliant step i've talked enough so good luck and goodbye see you in the next video